Hey Intro Algebra, this video you should watch after you've tried these problems already once. Watch the video, take notes, and then you can try it again to make sure that you get 100%. One thing to know is these notes you take, you can use them on your final progress check on Wednesday, May 20th, so it's a really good idea to have awesome notes. This first problem says order these numbers from least to greatest. So one thing that I can do is kind of think about these um, in terms of decimals for some of them. I know that two thirds, that's a decimal I kind of have memorized. That's 0 0.666 dot 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 dot. If I didn't know that, I know that I can do two divided by three. And from there on, I can see that that decimal is 0 0.6 repeating. Okay, so then I know that 0 0.6 is smaller than 2 thirds, so that would be over here. 65%, that's 0 0.65. Uh, so that is smaller than 2 thirds, that would have to go here. And then 5 6 is closer to 1 than 2 thirds, so I know that 5 6 is even bigger. So if I were writing these in order from with the least on the top and the greatest on the bottom, I should have 0 0.6, 65% then two-thirds, then five-sixths. For these, you have to choose from the drop-down menu to describe each point on this number line. For point A, this, I would look at this scale first. You can see that each tick mark is one-fourth. So this is one-fourth, and this is one-half, and this is three-fourths, and then one. So if I'm looking back here, this is going to be negative one-and-a-half. I'll write negative 1.5. And so this is going to be negative two. The answer that you should have gotten there for A is negative 2. For B, it's right between negative 1 and negative 1.5. So I know that's going to be negative 1.25, but that wasn't one of the options. Which one is the same? Well, it's not negative 1.5. It's bigger in absolute value than negative 1, so negative 3 fourths is no good. And that's no good. Negative 5 fourths, well, that's the same as negative 1 and 1 fourth. So that's the answer that I wanted. Okay, letter C is not quite to the negative 1, so in absolute value, a bit smaller than negative 1 is in absolute value. Um, so there's negative 1 half. So that's got to be negative 3 fourths. Let's see which of these options. Yep, I have a negative 3 fourths, so that's my option there. Letter D I have already labeled as 3 fourths. All right, if this is 1 and 1 fourth, then this should be 1 and 1 half. Let's look at the options for letter E. 1 and 1 half isn't an option, but I've got this 3 halves. And of course, 3 halves is the same as 1 and 1 half. So for point E, 3 halves. And point F, let's look carefully at that one. So this is going to be 1 and 3 fourths. Let's see what my options are. Oh, here I've got 1.75. Great, so all my points are labeled. For this, we have to evaluate with these values for the variables. So remember that these are absolute value bars. So this is the absolute value. And then the place of z, I'm going to put negative 6 minus 2 times. In the place of x, I'm going to put 3. All in absolute value bars divided by the y, which is negative 4. And then I just go ahead and simplify step by step. Make sure you take this absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 12 is positive 12. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So the value of the expression is negative 3. All right, an item that originally cost $34 is on sale for 15% off. There are a couple ways to do this. Um, you could calculate 15% and then subtract it because that's your discount. There are a couple ways to calculate 15%. You could do 0 0.15 times 34. You could set up a proportion, 15 out of 100 equals, I'll use D for discount out of 34, and then cross multiply. Either way, when you do this, you get 5.1. Now make sure that you actually subtract that discount. You do 34 minus 5.1, which gives you 28.9. Another way to do it is to say, well, it's 15% off, which means that you pay 85%. So you can do 0 0.85 times the original price of $34. And you'll still get the same thing, 28.90. All right, we talked about this a little bit up above. A great way to solve proportions is to cross multiply. So I've got 4.5x equals 11.4 times 3. I'll divide both sides by 4.5. 
And it says to write my final answer as a decimal, which I did, 7.6. Okay, here we've got to simplify. When we go to deal with these parentheses, don't forget you have to distribute. And when we distribute, don't forget that we're distributing that negative 3 times both. So I've got 5x minus 3x. And then here's the real kicker. You need to have plus 15 because we've got this negative 3 and negative 5. We've got like terms here. So I have 2x plus 15. Now those are not like terms, so I can't simplify anymore. 2x plus 15. A similar problem. Well, this should not show up on your final. Similar problem here. So we're going to have to find like terms again. The x squareds go together. x squared terms. And then the x terms, I've got 6x. And make sure you realize that negative sign goes with the 10x. And then I've got the regular numbers, the negative 4 and the 10. So 5x squared plus x squared, that gives me 6x squared. 6x minus 10x gives me negative 4x. Negative 4 plus 10, that gives me positive 6. So letter A. That's just being careful there. In a class of 23 students, there are 13 students who ride their bike to school. What percent of the students ride their bike? So 13 out of 23 ride their bike. And we want to know what percent out of 100. There are a few different ways to do this, but the proportion way is kind of a nice one. You can do this simply by cross multiplying here. Okay, now it says to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So I'll round this to 56.5%. Okay, this one again is an evaluate. So I'm gonna plug in for the variables. Make sure that you plug in for the right variables. So the first thing says Z. So where I see Z, I'm gonna put three minus X. And for X, I need a negative two all divided by y, which is 1 half. So that's going to give me 5 on the top because minus and negative is the same as plus. Divided by 1 half. When I divide by a fraction, that is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So 10 over 1 or 10. Okay, this one says to find the sum. 4.9 is the same as 4 and 9 tenths. So if I did this as fractions, I could do 4 and 9 tenths plus 2 and 3 fifths. If I'm going to add fractions, I would need a common denominator, so that'd be probably 10. 4 and 9 tenths plus 2 and 6 tenths. And if I add those together, I would get 6 and 15 tenths, but of course that's the same as 7 and 5 tenths. Uh, that's not there, but 7.5 is. You could have also changed all of these to decimals in the first place. 3 fifths is the same as 6 tenths, so I should have, could have done this as 4.9 plus 2.6. Either way, we get 7.5. Great. Just a reminder to keep these notes super neat, and you'll be able to use them on your final progress check next week. Awesome job.